What's up, y'all? Welcome to another episode of Seed to Stage. Um, today, I just got Fab Filter Pro Q3, and I couldn't be more excited about showing this to you. It's just like I didn't know that they could improve on such an incredible plugin already. I use Pro Q, well, have been using Pro Q2 every single day for the last, you know, uh, two years or something, and and this this plugin just well, let's get into it. I have a little jam here, um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop an instance of Pro Q3 in each one of these each one of these tracks. So I've got three tracks: one drum, one bass, one synth, and I also have just the master bus. So I'm just going to have four instances of Pro Q3, and let's go ahead and listen to what we got. Just a little jam. All right, so if you're not familiar with ProQ, um, this is what it looks like. It's It's got a, an analysis screen um, with the EQ curve right laid over top of it. And that's just, I mean, it's such a great idea. Let's just go ahead and, and, and just watch what this does. So we've got the f frequency spectrum, and you're, you're, you have essentially an EQ laid over a, a, a frequency spectrum analyzer. It's just, it's it's genius. I mean, the, the layout is incredible already, and it looks great on my, my Mac Retina screen. They have a Retina enhanced um, UI here. So uh, I'm on the bass track right now, and something that is unique about Pro-Q is that, you know, when there's something you want to EQ, you can take a look at this frequency spectrum and you can just grab a section, and when you double click, you create a band, all right? So, so what's cool about this is that the entire interface is totally arbitrary until you decide to, to, to make a change. One thing I've noticed is that when you uh, click all the way over here in the corner, you can create a low cut or a high cut uh, curve. If you want to make a low shelf, you can click kind of in this area and then all of a sudden you've got a low shelf. Or the same way, you've got a high shelf. And so these are just really fast things that, I, that I've always loved about Pro-Q. Now, Pro-Q3, some of the new features that we've got going on is, let, let's just go ahead and, and check out um, what I would consider maybe to be the most robust analyzer uh, section of any equalizer I've ever seen. What they've implemented here, and something that's just totally blowing my mind, is that any instance of Pro-Q3 you have open, you have another you, you can look at and use an, the analysis feature on any other track. So right now I'm, I'm focusing on the bass track, okay? So let's say I wanna talk about the relationship between the bass and the synths. So I'm gonna load up the synths as the analyzer uh, spectrum. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna overlay the frequency analysis of the synth part over top of the bass. So let's just watch it. So obviously the bass one is this purple one, and then the red one is the, the synths. So I don't know if you've noticed this yet, but you're noticing this uh, these little red lines right here. Um, and, and by the way, I recommend that you guys are on headphones listening to this, because a lot of the changes I'm going to make are not going to be that audible unless you, you are able to hear those spectrums. But let's go ahead and take a look at this, this area. And what this red means is that um, it's it's showing you where frequencies are kind of building up. And and uh, a lot of the times, you're gonna have frequency build up in the low mids. And here's a perfect example of low mid frequency build up. Uh, there's, in the in the synth and in the bass, there's this area that's just got too much going on. So, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double click here. And I've made a, I've made a band, okay? So I've made a band in this area. <clears throat> something that I can do now is, uh, and a lot of people that use Pro-Q don't even know this is a feature, you can go down here to this area and you can change the the curve of the, of, of the bell curve here, and I can change it to a different slope. So let's try the 36. And as, as you notice, this slope, as I increase the, the number, gets more and more steep, okay? So I'm just going to focus on this area of red. Okay, you can see just that little bit of red there. I'm gonna pull that down just a little bit. I'm gonna decrease the, or I'm gonna increase the Q, so I'm focusing just on that little area of, of contention, okay? And there's also another one kind of here, but let's let's just go ahead and leave this where it is. Now let's go over to the synth. What we can do, see what we're doing is we're, we're establishing kind of this mixed relationship. I'm gonna turn the bass track on the analyzer of this side. 
and as you can see, we've still got that same area of red, okay? So I'm gonna take it a step further. I'm gonna create a band, pull it down a little bit, change the slope, okay? Focus it. But notice that, see, the, the, there's a lot of stereo information in the synth that I really like in that low range. I don't wanna lose that. So what's interesting is that the bass is, is mainly in the mids, meaning that there's not that much stereo information, but in the, the synth, there's a lot on the outside. So what I can do is I can remove, the, the point of contention is in the mids. So what I can do is over here on this side, you can see that you've got all these options for what you're actually EQing. Are you EQing the left channel, the right channel, stereo, which is the standard one, or the mids or the sides? So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pull the mid out, okay? So this is, remember, we're on the synth track. And the point of contention is right here, the, the frequency buildup. So I'm just gonna pull this down. And again, this might be a little more uh, extreme than I normally would do. I just want to make sure you can hear what's going on here, okay? So the next thing I'm going to do real quick is, is my, my favorite little, little trick. I'm going to key map the Q command to each one of my FabFilter Pro Q plugins. In the within the track, not the master. I'm just gonna leave that one where it is for now. This way we can A B the differences, okay? So let's listen to the bass and the synth before. And now I'm gonna hit this Q. And notice that there's just more space for everything. I've made more space on the outside for the synth, and there's more, it just feels more dialed in. There's not that woof 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 kind of stuff going on. I'm gonna disable it, so listen. Hear all that frequency build up there? Hit the Q again. So, I mean, just right there, the value of Pro Q3, just right there alone, has 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 made itself worthy. So now let's go ahead and look at the uh, the classic relationship between the bass and the drums. Okay. So I'm gonna load up the Pro Q3 in the drum area. Okay. And I'm gonna go to my analyzer and I'm gonna pick the bass. Okay. So I'm gonna unsolo everything. So let's see what we got going on here. So obviously we've got some sub-competition around, around 50 hertz. You can see it. You can see it here in this little red area, right? So, so this is where you have a, a chance to make a decision. Do I like the low end in the kick drum or do I like the low end in the bass? You know, th these are the kinds of decisions that it's good to make in the mix. Um, like if, if I'm just listening to this drum beat by itself, I don't hear any issues, okay? But once I add the bass, I, I need to make a decision. Okay, so so who's who's gonna take over the sub duty? And I think I want to have the actual bass sound, not the not the kick drum, because what I like about the kick drum is that it's uh, it's got a lot of punch to it. So I want to keep the punch, but I'm gonna replace the the subs, uh, or I'm going I'm going to give the emphasis of the subs to the bass, not the drums. So let's go ahead and listen to this. We're gonna just solo these two out. So this is our area of contention. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a band. Okay, and what I'm doing is I'm just pulling out that 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 range, and I'm keeping the punchiness of the of the kick drum, but I'm taking out some of that super low end. Okay, and again, if you don't have headphones on, y'all are not gonna hear this. So, so get your listening, uh, get, get your shit together. <laughs> All right, so uh, here I am, and I've I've got this this low end kind of pulled out, and now this 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 isn't a contention point anymore. So let's go ahead and A B this. So now that I have headphones on, I can absolutely hear the difference here, okay? So I'm just pulling out some of that, that low end, so now there's not as much competition, okay? So that's the that's the analyzer um, feature. I mean, you know, Pro-Q has always had an anal analyzing feature for uh, external audio that you're piping in, but what's cool about this is that I have, I have the ability to listen to tracks and their relationships between each other, and this is, to me, like, my favorite feature. Um, now, remember, this is no replacement for actually listening and 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 trying to to develop your skills in terms of being able to figure out frequency ranges with your ear because at the end of the day the ear is always going to be boss the ear is always going to know what's going on more than anything else okay so so i think that's really important um one more let's just run through this one more time so you get the workflow i'm going to load up the synth track as the analysis feature overlaid over the kick drum. So we're looking at the kick drum EQ, or the, I'm sorry, the drums, the drums, full drums EQ, okay? Let's make sure there's no more points of contention here. And here we go again, there's just a little bit of that, that low mid uh, stuff we were dealing with before. So 
I'm just going to pull this down, change my slope. So now you can see, so you can see what we're carving out. We're carving out, this is the area of the kick drum, okay? We're carving out that, that, that place for the synth. And, and now we have, that's with it off. And that's with it on. We've just got just the the mix is just so much more dialed with that with that little bit. Okay, so let's move on to the next feature. Um, we're gonna look at the master bus. This is the this is the EQ going on in the master bus. If I hover my mouse in this area, watch what happens. The analyzer starts to slow down its response so that it's starting to show me some 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 interesting information. It's showing me first of all kind of an average curve. This is the curve of the whole song. All right. And I'm noticing some, what it's doing is it's showing me some peaks, okay? When you were EQing tracks, sometimes we want to listen for those peaks. Those peaks can sometimes be um, annoying, or they can be uh, harsh to listen to, or they can, they can stick out in the mix in ways that we don't like. I also want to say that sometimes peaks are desirable because that's what makes your music unique, okay? Peaks aren't always something that you want to just EQ out. There shouldn't be, there's no prescription rule for equalizing anything okay just don't listen to anyone that says you always do this or always do that you always do what the music is telling you to do that's what you always do so so let's go ahead and take a listen to this i'm using the analyzer on the master bus okay so i'm noticing that there is there's a peak around 10 uh 10 kilohertz and i know where it's coming from i can hear it it's in the drum track so if i solo just the drum track and i'm still looking at the the master bus There's, a, there's that, that 10 kilohertz, and, and it's also in kind of the 995 area of that. So what I can do is I can go into uh, this first track, okay? I can hover my mouse down here, and it's going to make that peak. Now, what it, what it does is thing, they, they, they coined this term called the spectrum grab. So I can click on this. Boom. I'm pulling that range out. So what I'm going to do also, I mean, isn't that magical? All you have to do is just hover, find a peak, click on it, and drag it down. And it makes a notch filter. I don't really see the reason to pull that one out. I kind of like that one. This one is the one that's kind of annoying to my ears. Okay, so I'm just listening for peaks. I'm hovering my mouse right there. And it's showing me where the, where the, where the peaks are, okay? So, now that I have this band created, when I A-B this... Something is very, is, is lost when I EQ that all out. I mean, I'm also doing this, this is very extreme, this is <laughs> minus 12 dB, but I'm doing this so you can hear it, okay? So, so I've, I've effectively got rid of that peak, but I'm losing a lot going on in the EQ. So that's, that's where what, um, you know, I, I think the hype of Pro Q3, this, this is where the hype is. The next thing that you can do, I'm gonna move this over just a little bit to try to grab the whole of that peak. The next thing you can do is you can right click on the band and say make dynamic okay so what this is doing is this is adding a compressor to this range all right so notice that the compressor jumped up to uh to the visualizer showing a 30 decibel range i'm going to keep it at 12 okay now it's really scooped what's happening is that it's added a compressor to this band so whenever this band hits notice that it's only it's only reducing that band when that frequency range peaks, okay? And what you can do is you can click on this little area and you can increase the range. Boom, look at that. You can increase the range of this dynamic EQ by pulling down on it. You can also go the other way and you can make it an expander, right? Ooh, that's harsh. <laughs> but you can you can move this either way. So why would you want to use an expander? Well, maybe you want to make the the um, the snap of the kick drum a little bit louder whenever it hits or something like that. But what I'm doing right now is I'm just pulling this frequency range down, which and, and so the difference that's made here is that I'm not losing the treble frequencies when this sound isn't happening. I'm only losing those treble frequencies when the sound's happening. So let's A-B it. There's that harsh peak. Turn it back on. And there you go. How fantastic is that, okay? So we can take this very this very thought here and we can start to put it in different places. So we can make this area a dynamic EQ. Let's go ahead and listen to the bass and the, and the drums. 
Okay, maybe we could turn the analyzer back on the bass just for the fun of it, okay? This was our point of contention before in the subs, all right? What I can do is I can right-click on this band and say, make dynamic, because the bass and the drums aren't always hitting at the same time, and that super low end of the bass isn't always there. Kind of, yo, it happens at different times, so I'll make this dynamic. And now I, what I can do is I can increase the range a little bit and then drag the gain back up a little bit. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm adding, now I have a little bit more low end in the kick drum because I'm side chaining essentially the kick drum and, and, the, and the bass. This is so massively useful and, and in a lot of ways you just gotta try it to know, okay? So that's another one of my favorite features, this dynamic EQ thing. It's, it's truly amazing, it's very useful, okay? So let's listen to everything. Let's turn it off. Oh man, the, the difference this is making is just mind blowing. Okay, so let's go to the next thing that's new. Um, on the 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 master bus, they've made a couple new EQ curves, um, and and one of them is a, a tilt shelf. So this is kind of a, a, a really useful uh, thing for just overall sound sculpting. Let's go ahead and and, and take a listen. As I increase the gain, what will happen is that everything above this point will increase in volume and everything below it will decrease over the over the slope of the curve, okay? Right? So maybe I want to give emphasis to the lows or emphasis to the highs. That's what this is for. And you can choose the tilt of it. You can make it really steep. You can make it less steep. And I find this, I just find this really useful for just subtly changing stuff. So in, in this situation, I feel like the very, very low subs are just a little bit too loud. So this is, again, going to be a subtle change, but I'm just going to give emphasis to everything else. I'm going to do it kind of just over the bass ranges, right there. So when I A-B this, you can hear just the smallest little bit of emphasis in the highs. I find that really useful. Okay, so um, for those of you that are new to Pro-Q and the Pro-Q Fab Filter world, um, one thing that that a lot of people don't know that you can do just right off the bat is when you're listening to the mix and, and you're really using your ears, you can solo the bands that you're working with. So when I'm playing this, let's say I want to listen to the highs, just the high area. I create a band and as I hover my mouse over it, this little headphone thing appears. And, look, and, and all of a sudden I can slide this around and I can hear the range that I'm working in. So I can make decisions. This range right here, I'm, I'm not really a big fan of, so I can just pull that down a little bit. And let's, let's do it again, let's listen to some other places. So this range I could take a little bit out. And this kind of EQing, this is this is more like uh, I, I would say this is kind of like you know, wh what you would do if you're working on mastering these very very small changes. Okay, um, so yeah, that is Pro Q, and and I gotta say, I mean, if I was a plug and review person, maybe I maybe I will be. I don't know. Um, I would give this a ten out of ten. It's 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 just so fantastic. I mean, maybe a nine point nine out of ten because every once in a while when you grab a frequency band for some reason the gain just shoots all the way down to plus or minus. 30 dB just for no reason. I don't know why. Maybe it's just a live and Pro Q, uh, you know, situation. But but one way or another, Pro Q. If you buy one external plugin outside of Ableton, it's got to be Pro Q. Like hands down, it is the most useful, most flexible EQ. Um, it just it really is a game changer for you, especially. I would say even even for the novice, because what it does is it helps you. You're looking at a frequency spectrum. You're starting to learn what you know, 400 hertz sounds like? What does, you know, 100 hertz sound like? What does, you know, these ranges, it's almost like a teaching tool as well. Um, I, I mean, I couldn't give this enough stars. Um, absolutely love Pro-Q. I hope you learned something from this. If you like this video, like, comment, subscribe. Um, I know I was really talky with this one, but you know, it's, this this channel isn't just about getting to the facts. Boom, 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 boom. It's also about learning. We're learning how to mix. We're learning how to, how to you know, how, how to make the mix move with with your 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 thoughts and your mind and we're trying to train ourselves here so yeah much love guys thanks for watching i'll see you next time